Hey guys, what's up? This is Gum, and welcome to Outer Wilds on the PC. This is a game that came out quite a few years ago, but I've been wanting to play it the entire time. It has gotten a DLC that I don't, I don't really know much about, the, the DLC or the actual overall game story, but this is a game that, from what I've seen, is about exploring and solving the mystery of this like small solar system that is trapped in a time loop. So what it's gonna, that's about like the extent of my knowledge. I know that like, as we play the game, time resets and we have to like go, you know, figure things out as we play. So let's go ahead and get into this. Now the game recommended an Xbox or a uh, gamepad. So I am playing with an Xbox controller. That's why you will see Xbox props. So let's go ahead and see what ends up happening. Oh, oh shit, I have control. <laughs> I thought I was like laying in bed and then my character would like get up while well, I was in bed. And then I like stood up and looked straight up. Hello, we've got an alien dude here, Slate. There's our pilot, back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say, ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. Uh, I'll say, you're sure you fixed the retro rockets? That was only a problem one time, and then maybe a few times after that. But hey, no reason to dwell on the past, right? Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes or whatever. Yeah, sure, whatever. Oh, do I I have a... Oh! <laughs> yes! Marshmallow roasting mechanic! Oh! Character's not liking it. I'm trying. <laughs> this is a little tough. I'm trying to, you know, trying to get it lightly roasted on all sides. Rather than getting it set on fire, it's smoking. We're doing it. Ooh, oh, you know what? I think we're good. All right. Fun. Love that. Oh. Well, I've got no idea what kind of adventure we're in for, but uh, yeah, I guess. We'll go ahead and look around. Okay. Wires launch codes. All right. I'm assuming we can't go up here. Whoa! But we can. We've got a, uh, a jump that gets charged. Can I just... No, you cannot quick hop. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Whoa! Don't know what the fuck that is. Hey there. Mika. Hey, it's you. Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going to go into space? Aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. Uh, I hear you and Slate beefed up the model ship. Can I see it? Yeah, we calibrated the controls and installed better thrusters. Want to give it a test drive? Slate says it's just like the real thing, only less likely to start a fire. Try to land in one of the geyser pools. Show me what you've got. All right, all right. Fly model ship. Uh, we've got a down thrust, up thrust. Oh, reset. Oh, okay. I got it in. It's gone. Woo Fly into space. Oh God, the sun. Oh, oh, I'm blowing up the ship. Oh, everything's going off. Oh, we've crash landed on an alien planet. No sign of intelligent life anywhere. Ugh. Well, that would be interesting. Oh, that was just like the time the external fuel tanks exploded on re-entry. You'll... You'll be okay flying the big one, right? Of course, I will be much more careful about flying the ship. This is easy. This is easy. This is easy. Boom. See? 
What a landing! I guess that's why Slate lets you fly the real thing, huh? See? Exactly. I know what I'm up to. Oh! I'm not human! Oh, oh, oh. That person wasn't the alien! I'm the alien! Ooh. We got a little flashlight with a uh, right thumbstick. Hello, Porphy. Hey, yo, Hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gossin open up a bottle of the good stuff. Oh, the good stuff is less delicious sap wine and more daunting digestive challenge. An iron stomach is the mark of a true Harthian, my friend. Our hardy hunter-gatherer lifestyle stems from trial and error. By which I mean our ancestors survived eating a lot of bad things. <laughs> Alright, so I guess our species is called the Harthians. What is, what is our planet? Is our planet called Hearth? That'd be a little, like, you know, ridiculous. We're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? I'm told my odds of survival are statistically quite high. Yeah, the space program has certainly come a long way. I should probably thank you for causing fewer flash fires than your predecessors. By the way, good luck with those retro rockets. Thanks, thanks. Oh gosh. Nighttime already? This is interesting. Satellite camera. Oh. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite, which is currently orbiting Timber Heart. The satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our village. I don't know what our village looks like. That's interesting. I feel like I had it instantly. I don't think there's actually a reward for me doing this, but they gave me the mental challenge. Good enough, I guess. So I wonder if this is going to be part of that time loop. This pilot seat, used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar, is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued with such a distinction requires a breath, uh, although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as a landmark achievement in our Harthian history. You know, the way these people talk about their space programs got me very worried about our lives. Oh boy. Outer Wilds Ventures presents postcards from orbit. Fun. So, it's launch day, huh? How's gonna miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it. And the platform those ships launched from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? That big tree in the village should be perfect, or would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program, just say the word. The launch pad is flammable? Ah, you didn't realize that? Don't worry, it's held up for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours. Probably. Oh gosh, yeah, that is a little scary. But yeah, you know, I only have to make it off the platform. I don't really have to deal with the consequences of the fire. Hello there, space cadet. I hope you're, I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Uh... Tell me about the travelers' instruments. Oh, sure! I made all of their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's Church drums, Rybark's banjo, and Gabro's flute. Alright, those sound important. I should probably... Take a picture of that. Alright. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course. Though Feldspar's been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels just like yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space? That'll be one of the space program's other travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signoscope and track them down. Huh. Music's so intense. Shame I got... I had to get a little distracted there. Alright, trying to get ourselves... Launch code. 
Hello, astronaut. What's with the radio? We wanted to play hide and seek, but Moran won't let us borrow the signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey, can we use your signal scope? Can we, can we, please? We'll even let you be it. Sure. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and I will hide with these radios, and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins! Okay, close your eyes and start counting. Alright, they're gonna teach me how this works. Oh. Interesting. Excuse me, excuse me, trying to get to the kid. Howdy. Aw, oh, you found me? But my hiding spot was super good. Don't forget, you have to find both of us, okay? Yeah, I can do that. Holy fucking loud waterfall. Jesus. Aha! Hello, Galena. I won. I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. You're welcome, Galena. Alright. Well, now we know how that works. I feel like this is one of those games where I can kind of jump to a lot of places. But we'll see. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme. Singing helps me pass the time. We're leaving the crater. I guess we'll all be a little busier without you around to lend a hand. That big water planet, Giants Deep, that's where I'd go. Why's that? One time, after the rest of the village had left to sleep, and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabbro told me about their first trip to Giants Deep. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see it too far down, on account, uh, on account of how the murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Gabbro wants to see what lays beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down. Suddenly, Gabriel couldn't go any further. Yeah, John Steve has a current you can't pass through. Sure, okay, but shut up a minute. This is the good part. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabriel go any deeper. It held Gabriel back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. And then, in the terrible darkness, Gabriel saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast. Is there sap wine involved during Ca Cabro's campfire story? Come to think of it, don't you have somewhere else you should be exploring that isn't here? You can go away now, assuming you're done scaring off all the fish. I mean... I could jump down there. Probably. Sheesh, this is a big village! I had no idea that this game was going to have at least a starting NPC camp like this. Hey there. What the fuck? Hi, astronaut! You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gossin said it used to be bigger when they were hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown-up. Ghost matter is awesome. You know how you know ghost matter is how tech tech tight lost their foot, right? Whoa, really? That is so cool. Oh gosh. Danger! Inside the fence is a pocket of ghost matter, a strange and dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and it will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. Alright. Why does it show the take snapshot button twice? Huh. Zero G cave. Hey, come say hi to your old flight coach before you launch. I've got zero G training set up if you want a refresher. A refresher, Dawson. Sure, how'd they know I'd be here? Hey, I thought I might see you before the big launch. Nervous getting the better of you? I'm a little nervous, yeah. 
Good. Everyone should be a bit nervous going into space. I got cocky during my first flight and nearly put a new crater in the moon. Still, I was never as great as you. That's not what Slate says. Oi, you know better than to believe a word that lunatic says about me. They're still sore I made them install a safety harness in the cockpit. Claimed it would throw off the thrust to weight ratio. Honestly, one of these days I'm gonna throw off Slate's thrust to <laughs> Slate's thrust to weight ratio. So listen, there's a satellite. Which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment set up down in the zero-g cave and in need of repairs. If you're looking for a little last-minute zero-g practice, head down the lift and into the cave. Or don't, so long as you're confident you can make the ship repairs in space. Yeah, sure, I'm down for this. Cool, get to it. And try not to concuss yourself right before your first launch. Alright. I'm glad we're being able to take the time to learn about our equipment here. Uh, okay, that's a cool cave wall. Can I jump off this thing? I can't get- I can't move at all. Alright. Whoa, that is cool. Game, I get it. But like, what if I just want to sit here and- Thank you. Observe things in the dark. Zero G cave. Whoa. Ooh. Cool. This doesn't seem that zero G though. Not yet, at least. Hey, hey! Nice of you to drop down. Give me the dirt. Some fresh dirt? Not much happening down here lately. Let me think. Come to think of it, Tektite saw something crash outside of the village crater earlier. That's new and different. Oh, hey! How about that? Yeah, they were on Firewatch with the old scout launcher and saw smoke, so they went to check it out. Safety first, right? No, I'm kidding. I said that to Tektite once. Pretty rude how long they laughed for, if you ask me. <laughs> hey, you're back. You need something? Uh, guess where I'm going today. Oh, no. No. No, no. No way. You want to run off into space, that's your business. But don't make me, you know, think about it. Bad enough we got this weird cave down here. <laughs> I don't want to think about space, gosh! Just getting in some zero-g time. Oh, so you're going in there? In that cave? Ugh. What? No, I'm fine. Great. Great and fine. Yeah, I'm gonna drift uh, around down there for a while. Ugh. Just gonna float upside down and whatnot. Ugh. Just, you know, ricochet off the walls, spin around a lot, that kind of thing. You're... Ugh. You're the worst. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, he doesn't like space. He gets topsy turvy. Ooh, I might get topsy turvy. So we're not in the zero G part yet. That's for sure. We're working on it. We're working on it. The lower we get. The less gravity there seems to be. Oh boy. They just like locked me in. Okay, so now we can roll. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> I thought we were going to be able to like rotate ourselves with both left and right bumper. Instead, it's hold left or it's holding left bumper and then rotating by using my uh, right analog stick. It's not the worst. But it's also not the best. Ooh, I can match velocity? Cool. Alright, so how the hell am I going to repair this? Do I just go up to it and just... Hold... Alright, hold X. Hell yeah. Repairing the ship's going to be easy. Thankfully, I've played quite a few games with Zero-G. And flown around in quite a few games. Just in general, where you can flip yourself all around. So Zero-G doesn't really mess me up too much. Unless everything looks the same. Then, then I get confused. Oh, there's a fuel limit? Oh, shit. What's over here? Huh. Okay, that was the way in. Is 
Is that it? Is that it? Oh. Well, all right then. Let's get out of here. Oh, oh, that was abrupt. Here's the suit back. All right. I'm ready to navigate space, even though I'm not looking forward to rotating in space. Why is my shadow like that? Nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space, but just remember your training and try not to hit anything big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there. And hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you, got it? You got it, Gasson. You know, it'd been really interesting if I'd gone to this game not knowing about uh, the time loop thing. I truly would have been just trying to keep myself as 100% safe as possible, but... Now, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes it might take some risks after whatever happens. Uh, I saw smoke coming from the Young Bark Crater up north and figured I should go check it out. You can use the Scout Launcher, just please don't break it while I'm gone. Tech tight. That is the Scout Launcher. And they said they went north. Quantum Grove Crater is south. Northwest is Geyser Mountains. Son. Uh, North Young Bark Crater. Alright. So is this like a... Well, there's definitely something in the crater. Oh, it teleports back. That's fun. Into the sun. They've definitely made for an interesting mechanic here by not letting us just see a live view with all of these cameras. Everything is just spam the camera button. Which isn't the worst, but I also hate the sound, kind of. So, <laughs> we're going to see how that goes. And retrieve. Actually, no, there's something beyond here. The darkness of space! Whoa! Cool. And what are those called? No My Ruins. Sweet. Whoa. Somehow I gotta get over there. I think I go that way. What's over here? Hmm? Oh, hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch, right? That's lucky. Yeah, what are you up to? I'm using my signal scope to pick up signals from distant planets. It's set to the Outer Wilds Ventures frequency so I can pick up the traveler's music. Last night I heard Rybeck's banjo coming from the Brittle Hollow. A Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets, too. It depends on what time of day or night it is, since different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are so cool. Any good, uh, haven't you been up in this tree for a while? I'm concerned Mar will cut down this tree if there's no one in it, so I don't want to leave it for too long. Mayor Rutu Rut Rutile says Mar isn't supposed to cut it down, but I don't think they see eyes to eyes on this one. Um, I'll still watch the launch, though. I'll have a good view from up here. Good, good, good. Yeah, there's the ship. Alright, hold on. They want me to... Jesus. There's a planet between the sun here. <laughs> Interesting. Anything else out there? Well, that's a harmonica.
Yeah, I hope that does mean they're alive, because... They could totally just have left the radio on loop and they're dead. I don't know what kind of things are going to happen out there. We're in that awkward... Oh! <laughs> Shut up, game. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, that's what rails are for. Ugh. <laughs> Gosh. And now I'm gonna look like a jerk. I'm not gonna talk to any fucking person. It's like, I'm trying to get the codes and leads. If you didn't know about the launch and you didn't say goodbye to me in that time period, then that is your fault. So yeah, I don't think we're uh, in the time loop part of the game yet. So I just legit died to those people, <laughs> you know? I'm not back from time or anything, I, this is just an alternate universe entirely. Jeez. I don't even remember what I was thinking and doing when I walked off, I just kind of was thinking about, like, the planets and stuff. Oh, uh, this time of night. Seven hundred meters? That is not seven hundred meters! <laughs> no way, right? That's too close. But you know what? It's alien video game. Some weird things going on here. Oh! Now I remember what I was thinking. We're in that awkward part of the game where, like, our character has, like, you know, they live in this world. Clearly they, they've got, uh... A history. They know the things. But like we're 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 one of those characters where I'm just kind of role playing whatever the hell is available as options, so I can be a character who doesn't know shit, really. Yeah, people are just saying names and planets, and I know nothing. Hornfels, Gasson, Feldspar, Esker, and Slate. That's five names, and I only see four people. Weird. Outer Wilds Ventures founding members. Clockwise, from top left, Hornsfell, or Hornfells, Gasson, Slate, and Feldspar. Okay, so Asker isn't in that picture. And we've talked to... Two of the people... So far. Because we're about to talk to Hornsfell. Big thanks to these additional founding members of Outer Wilds Ventures, without whom we would have never gone off the ground. Matthew Steinhauer, Ben Etherington, Quirty Up the Pie, Jordan Frith, Tom Cummings, Sean Shark Templar Farrell, today, uh, Ryan Omrecker. Alright. I'm guessing those are either Patreon or, or supporter names in time. Or because if those could have been. I don't know, maybe other people who, like, play, <laughs> played early acts parts of the game? I don't know the history of this at all, but alright, well, obviously we recognize one of those names. Uh, Outer Wilds Ventures, Timberheart's first and only space program, was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timberhearth and later made the first of what would be many landings of our moon, the Adel Rock. Well, I might go to the moon first. We'll see. This remarkably intact statue is carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur, 
Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in the solar system, we still have no idea where this species came from or what happened to them. Well, I can guess that they're going to be doing, you know, ancient alien shenanigans. <laughs> There's just going to be tons of structures all around the place and all kinds of things going wrong with the system because of it. Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day last, huh, buddy? It's the translator, tools, inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited it's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any Nomai text you want, anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours in inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh, jeez. Do not break it. Ugh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous, and I'm not even the one going to space. How are you feeling? I'm excited. Good, you're the only one. Are you've been... Him. <laughs> Good, you've only been waiting for this day since we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. So what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? New statue? You haven't heard? Gabbro brought it back with them from Giant's Deep. And Hornsfell's just finished prepping it for display. This is it right here. Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what a real live Nomai looks like. But I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. I'm the first fully intact statue ever found, you know. For how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, oh, jeez, I got a little carried away there. Go on. You have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? You got it, Hal. It is a very regal look, I suppose. The radio tower here on Timber Hearth was built to receive transmissions from our deep space satellite, and to this day still houses the first ever photos taken of the entire solar system. These photos were made possible by the Deep Space Satellite's unusual vertical orbit that carries it high above and below the plane of the solar system. Thanks to a recent upgrade, the Deep Space Satellite is now responsible for generating the real-time solar system map used by our newest astronauts. Cool. I like the sound of that. Watch closely. These balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon! As it orbits our planet, the outer rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. Alright. <laughs> I can fuck with them myself. Ooh, they move! What is this area? The strange rock moving around in this grotto appears to react to conscience observation. The level-headed among us realize that mu there must be some sort of optical illusion at play, but Gabriel claims the rock exists in all possible states until it is observed. Whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. Uh. Ooh. You've been observed, Rock! Now you can't go anywhere! Ha ha ha! Whoa! 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 Whoop! Got you on the one. Got you on the right rock! I can force you onto the pink rock. Bloop! Ha <laughs> ha! Bloop! Green rock. Bloop! Pink rock. Bloop! Green rock. That's gonna be a mechanic. Puzzle mechanic somewhere. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. Okay. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star has become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. If a star is massive enough, it will start to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on chart, uh, Chert's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. Yeah. The fate of stars are very fucking interesting. Ah. Millions from years from now, Earth is just going to be fucking swallowed up by our sun expanding into a red giant. This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out! Oh. 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 
Okay. There's going to be a lot of different movement mechanics, that's for sure. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to the Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. Yeah, the scout launcher was pretty cool. I'm wondering if my, my ship has one. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from the skull that they possess antlers and quite unusually, only three eyes. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, shows us that Harthians couldn't have dis descended from Nome uh, Nomaean ancestors. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. I guess that'll be up to me, huh? Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brut Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further Xenoarchaeological expeditions. Yeah, um, you definitely got me interested. What the fuck? This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. What in the hell? Okay, so, whoa. We're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction. She says calibrating the device won't take long. Okay. So I don't have to do anything with these little lines here, right? Fortunately, the Outer Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. Huh. I'm going to forget their names, and then I'm going to be like, Oh, who the hell is Felix? And Casova. Alright. Oh. Oh! oh! Holy shit! I didn't think that was going to happen with that map. I thought we were just going to look at a regular version, but this is a cool fucking map. Holy shit. The Interloper. The Hourglass Twins. Doc Bramble. Giant's Deep. Brittle Hollow. Brittle Hollow is a whole other planet. All right. We probably already learned that, but I, like, didn't fully remember. What the fuck is this? Is that the satellite? Neat. What about this? Something's got to be going on over here, especially since the light seems to be getting distorted around that. That's cool. Alright, close map. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations, and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Know My Translator 2. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? Um... I think I'll start with something small. Oh, you prefer to ease into things. That's a simple plan. More sensible than most of our astronauts tend to be, and that's a fact. You think you'll go to the, uh, to the Outer Rock then? Our moon would be a, per a safe place to travel to and get your bearings in space. And I'm sure Esker would appreciate the visit. Plus, we don't know what the ancient Numai, uh, Numai ruins on the moon are. Or why they were built. You can put your new translator tool through its bases. Well then, looks like all, that, like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. Alright, <laughs> I'm ready to die in space. Nope. I'm ready to get off this rock. Excellent. You'll be needing the launch codes then. Here they are. 
Basket off the ground before Slate makes any more modifications to your ship, eh? Good luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Thank you, Hornfells. All right. And, uh, our launch codes is two dash, one dash, two dots, one dash, one dot. Is that Morse code? Or is that just how their things are? What the fuck is this? This anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to the dark bramble. It appears well suited to living in the dark places with minimal atmosphere. Neat. I did not see that when we were walking through here originally. Um. 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 Oh my God. I. I think that thing just saved my progress. I'm assuming that's what that was about. Scary. Hey, hey! So did you get a good look at them? No, my statue. Uh, yeah, the statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing what? So its eyes opened, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch? Like, medically speaking? No, that statue is definitely weird. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Hornsfeld tried everything to get the statue's eyes to open, and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're going to get any answers to the museum statue, but Gabbro said they were going back to Giant's Deep. Don't know which island they're on, though. Maybe they'd be able to tell you more. On the other hand, Gabbro's, you know, Gabbro. So maybe you'd better off, be better off searching for more info on your own. Jeez, now I'm really jealous you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Thanks, Hal. I'm going to do my best. Even though I'm... Really, really terrible about, like, remembering names and random details. Yeah, <laughs> really, really bad about that stuff. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do my best. Hey there. Hello, astronaut. Are you going to space today? Are you going into space and never coming back like Feldspar did? Uh, don't worry, I'll come back. That's what Feldspar said too, but they never did. Hornsfeld will be really sad if you don't come back. Like how sad it makes them to talk about Feldspar. So you should make sure you don't get lost in space too. I'm gonna do my best, Tefra, but like, I can't really guarantee anything. Who knows what's happening out there. Alright, Slate. Looks like you're ready for takeoff. The excitement of a launch is fun and all, but I can't wait to get back to working on the new ship. We're working on fixing the autopilot's avoidance system for this one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right, well, one last mushroom, or well, not mushroom, marshmallow. Um, that one I didn't, uh, 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 uh. Don't put it too close to fire. Cause then it does that. <laughs> If I do it like this... I'm trying to get some lovely char. Just a little bit. Little bit of golden... Golden yellow color on it. You know, kind of like that. Perfect. Alright, Slate. I'm heading off. Better launch codes. And I did not have to actually remember the launch codes myself. Huh. Uh, interloper's not saying anything to us currently. I think that's the moon. That's where we're gonna go. Whoa. Ship log. 
few entries. Timber Hearth, the one and only Hearthian village as well as the main source of explosions on this planet. The Nomine statue in the observatory opened its eyes and looked at me. I saw strange glowing lights and my own memories flashed before my eyes. Hal says the statue has never opened its eyes before despite Hornfell's best efforts. Cool. Find in rumor mode. What the fuck? Whoa. Sounds like Esker's still stationed on the Adarok. They've been there by themselves for a while. Lunar Ruin. I hear there are Nomai Ruins somewhere on the Adarok. No one knows what they are or why they are built. The Nomai text in the observatory talks about some about calibrating some sort of device on the Adarok. Cool. Hal says Gabriel went back to Giant's Deep to try to learn more about the Nomai statue in the observatory. Alright, I like that. So we got... We have a rumor mode that will connect all the information that we're, like, learning. I can mark the location on the HUD. Not that I am 100% sure what that's going to do. Alright. So we got the Hourglass Twins. Those are near the sun. Timber Hearth is the second planet in the system with the Adarok as its moon. Brittle Hollow is... Uh, the third planet with Hollow's Lantern as its moon. Looks like there's like lava and shit getting sent off there. Then there's Giant's Deep. Wait, okay. Where is... Okay, so Gabbro is way out there. And that's not going to be my first stop. We're going we're gonna to keep things as close as possible and then like venture out further and further. I should probably suit up, right? Just in case something happens in the ship. Okay. Oh, right. I have to do the controls for liftoff. Alright. We're just trying to go to... Ah! <laughs> I, uh, oh my god. We we fell straight into the middle of the ship. Or straight into the middle of the village. Uh, no, no. No one judge me. Okay. Okay. I could also just land right back on Timber Hearth. Part of my ship's damage, so I, I probably should. We'll chill out next to these Nomai Ruins while we're at it. Alright. Alright. Oh, there's a landing mode? Oh, shit! Bloop! <laughs> Alright, well, I don't need my suit for that. Okay. Let's see what's going on over here. Okay. Well, there's no text over here for me to read. If I hold left bumper, it, like, slows my movements. That's interesting. Whoa. There's some kind of light pointing that way. And it pulses out. Interesting. Probably doesn't mean anything currently. Whoa. But who knows? is probably where I should have brought my suit because I would have a thruster to be able to navigate these things but I feel like we're not in the right area but I guess this is one of the games where you can kind of go wherever you want but in terms of like opening rumors 
This is one of those places that's like, this place is pretty thoroughly explored. Because it's on their home planet. So we'll, we'll just go back into the ship. Well, I will go... Oxygen refill. Spot a tree? Walk towards it. <laughs> okay. There is a crater on the planet that I want to go to. I need to go back to the village to kind of orient myself. Alright. Uh, so north... North from the scout launcher was this way. Whoa. That's cool. All right, let's take the suit just in case. Little Scout, see beyond the horizon, illuminate dark areas, detect hazards, and test the environment. Is that is that does that come with my my suit? Oh shit! Oh shit! Hell yeah! Whoop. Well, that's fucking terrifying. Hey, what's up, Tech Tight or Tech Kite? Ew, Hatchling. Thought you were taking that tin can of yours into space today. What are you still doing here? Me? I saw something crashing over the horizon. I didn't like what I was seeing in the pictures my little scout was sending back. So I thought I'd come over here and myself and take a look. Uh, is that a dark bramble seed? You think so? It's nothing I've ever seen on Timber Hearth before, so you're probably onto something there. Whatever it is, it put down roots in a hurry. I don't like the looks of this thing, Hatchling. Well, that's a fact. I think I'll set Mar and Hal loose on it. Best get rid of this mess sooner rather than later. And no one can remove an unwanted plant faster than a tree keeper can. I have to get a look good, or I have to get a look at what's inside the seed first, though. Don't want to set anybody to hacking up a potentially dangerous plant without a better idea of what's lurking inside there. Tough can haul me up. Uh, tough can haul me. Yeah, tough can help me haul the old scout launcher over here. Obviously, the opening is too small for someone to fit inside. And anyway, I'm not going to blindly stick my hand in something that looks as unpleasant as that seed does. That's a good way to lose an arm or two. I mean, I've got my own little launcher. Error. Duplicate signal. It says it's 500 meters. It's still going. What the fuck? What is going on in there? There's like an extra core inside that thing, man. I'm taking my thing back out. Blasted seed did a lot of damage when it crashed. I like this crater. Need something from me, from me, hatchling? Uh, I threw a little scout into the seed. You did, did you? You're telling me it's bigger on the inside than on the outside? Huh, that's gonna be a chore to chop up. No mistake! And can we remove- uh, can we even remove a seed that doesn't have the decency to stay the same size all the way through? Maybe I'd gra better grab an extra axe or three, just in case. Are you sure this seed isn't from Timber Hearth? Back in my younger days, I explored everywhere there is to go on Timber Hearth and saw everything there is to see, and then some. Trust me, we don't have anything like this. Nah, I reckon this thing's from Dark Bramble if it's from anywhere, Hatchling. I don't think I want to go to Dark Bramble, ever, if this is something that comes from there. I mean, at the very least, the inside of this thing just... 
Is that an anglerfish? And there's like trees and shit inside of it. It's weird. But it only goes 800 meters, which I mean, you know, is longer than the distance to the moon in this game, but like, whatever. Whoa. Okay. That's definitely how I get around. Okay. Oh, I took a little visit to the crater. I guess now we can head over to the moon. All right, let's get on out of here. Kind of, kind of get on out of here. First thing I'm going to do is fly around the planet and see if there's anything that catches my eyes for somewhere to land. Whoa. I wonder if I can go inside of the geysers. There seems to, I mean, you, <laughs> there is a hole all the way down. And what is this? Okay, there's a cave leading to some kind of crystal. Ah, 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 ah. Adjust. Um, we did it. Good landing. All right. Unidentified signal nearby. Yeah, that thing. That is what I'm here for. Frequency discovered. Quantum fluctuations. Signal identified. Grove shard. Well, that's creepy as fuck. Oh, it moved. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I expected that on the way down, but then it didn't move while I was moving around. The hell? It's always dark. Across old bark. The quiet shade. In the ancient glade. That's scary. There's another one a thousand meters that way. Oh! My ship! Don't do that! <laughs> don't move my ship, you don't have permission. Bad shard. Getting out of here. Uh, uh, I'm stuck on the tree. I'm stuck on the tree. That's not my fault. Curiosity, there's a tree stump with a hole. Where the wait. Yeah, my ship would be fine. Did this just move? I could have sworn there was a tree stump or something over here, but... Okay, okay, all right, yeah, that's what's happening. The geyser is moving! Oh, shit, well, you know what? Good thing I'm out here. My poor ship! It's just getting beat up by the environment, I'm so sorry. Okay, I think we're good. Put my suit away to see if that fuels it up. Mm. Oh, here we go. Refuel jetpack. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. 
Fuel tank and upper hull damaged. I don't even know what those are. Uh, we get like a little map here, but I don't know how to read this. Um. Uh. Headlights. Like, <laughs> in real life, I'd be like putting my face up to this thing to read it. I think what's broken is on top of the ship. Uh huh. You know, no, no worries about me setting off a thruster near a leaking fuel tank, obviously. Okay, ship's fixed. I'm out of this hole. What other things can we discover on our home planet besides these ruins? Oh! I didn't realize this little ruin that I had landed at was next to that crater. You know what? I'm not. I'm just confused. I thought I saw... Ugh, slow down, slow down, slow down. I thought I saw the smoke from that other crater. I was wrong. Okay, I'm curious about this little area. Now Now that I've got my jetpack on. Alright, ship, be, behave yourself. Oh, there's no quantum fluctuations this way. Bridge. Oh. Ooh. All right. There's a giant door in here. Mining site to be. What in the fuck? Oh, shit! Um... Oh, I... <laughs> um... Oh... Whose skeletons are those? Looks no man? Or something? This is intense. I mean, that looks like a giant gravity lift. Yeah. How far down does that go? Not that far down, actually. Alright, so there's just like a giant... pocket of water down there. What the fuck is that? Ah! I guess that's the time loop claiming me! Jesus! Where the hell is this gonna take me? Is it gonna take me back to that first statue? 
Oh my god. Take, it took me back to the start of the day. Oh shit. Uh, uh, hey, Slate! Uh, did I just die? Oh, bad dreams or something? You still look half asleep, but that's a negative on being deceased. I know it's tradition to sleep out under the stars the night before a launch, but if you ask me, it makes you all a bit jumpy. I... Uh... What's my mission once I'm in space? Hey, you're the pilot, you tell me. Aren't you the pilot, aren't you pilot types all eager to get up there and explore for yourselves? Doesn't matter if you go to the moon or Brittle Hollow or just the other side of Timber Hearth. It's all the same to me. Get out there and have fun. Just don't hurt the ship. That's all I ask. Well, listen. <laughs> well, listen. The ship is the least of my worries. Plenty of things are going to get hurt. But all right. Free flight checklist. Freeze time while reading ship log. Freeze time while translating text. Freeze time while talking to others. The fuck? Wait, freeze is... Wait, what the fuck is all this? Oh, this is a... This is a menu of things. Huh. Well, this is turned off by default. So... I'll take this as a... We'll leave this off, at least for now. I might turn it on in the future if I find myself talking to a bunch of people. I can definitely see where this would be annoying because I'm sure there's people out there I have I want to have full conversations with and not have time fucking yoink me backwards um, like it just did. That was terrifying, by the way. It just, it just fucking happened. And it also was like the worst place I could be in the fucking pitch black darkness and suddenly light just starts flying at me. <laughs> light just starts coming at me, man. <laughs> okay, well, let's skedaddle. I want to check out mine to be. I don't know where mine to be is. It's around. I'll recognize the place when we come across it. It's definitely not in this direction. Or is it? Oh! Okay. Fine. I'll leave the ship out here. Ugh. What the fuck? Oh shit, I can launch. <laughs> I can launch a scout with my ship in and of itself. I gotta get out of this thing. All right, <laughs> I gotta go a little fast to get back to mine to be. Uh, uh. Uh. 